Hello everyone and welcome to Don't Be Bored. I just got back from UK Games Expo and got a load of games. If you want to go and see my haul of what I brought home, go and check that special video out. Today I'm going to be going through the games that I played, giving you sort of my first impressions and general thoughts on them, and some of them you may even see reviews for in the near future. So let's jump into what I played at UK Games Expo 2024. My first play of the game when I got into the convention hall was Sumo. This is a tiny two-player trick-taking game. And, well, it sort of reminded me of Kirial the Jewel from Spiel Essen that I really enjoyed. But I think it's one of those ones that you'd need to play a few times to really grasp it. Because you're playing these sort of tricks and trying to push each other back and forth as the sumos on this sort of platform. Really nice and simple logic there. And then there's some special cases of if you play, I think it's like if you play a one and they play a four, then you win outright. But if they play a one when you've played a five, the person that played the five loses because it's like you've tried too hard and they've flipped you over sort of thing. There's little things like that that I think I only had a, played sort of a few rounds, a few games of sumo. They're the sort of things that I think once you've played a handful of times, they'll just click and you'll just love it. But it takes maybe a couple of those games to work out those special uh, sort of interactions between the cards. Next up, I went and demoed Rebirth. Now, this was on my sort of must play list, if you saw that from before UK Games Expo, because I was trying to work out, do I need to back this one? And while I didn't get a full game in, they kind of rushed us. We only played maybe, maybe like an eighth of the game. I think I'd only placed maybe sort of in the range of maybe eight to 10 of the tiles um, down onto the board. Well, first of all, I noticed that the production quality was, or production visually, was stunning. And they even said, well, these weren't actually the latest graphics. They then showed us the island board, which was much more vivid and stunning in colours, and said that's what the Scotland board, well, that level would be brought up to. So I think it looked great anyway. And they were making it look even better. I liked the simple play in terms of your placing just a single token on a turn, triggering some cool stuff. But I, I'm i not going to be backing this one, I don't think, unless those Kickstarter goodies look really fantastic. Mostly because of the shipping cost. I just, I'm not seeing because of the whole thing of like, you're playing VAT and postage and everything for Kickstarter, it's probably not an instant back for me. So I'm glad I got to play it. I definitely want to play more of it, play it again. I just don't want to commit to the Kickstarter because of the cost. Next up, I had actually got Dwarf Romantic The Jewel on my sort of playlist. Unfortunately, from sort of walking around, I could only see one table of it at the Pegasus Spiel booth. And well, Every time I walked past, it looked like they were just starting the game. However, I did a, I was able to play Dorf Romantic, the board game. The first one, the sort of cooperative one that I pretty much sort of, I even said this in my UK Games Expo build-up video, I'd kind of written that one out. I'd kind of been like, everyone had sort of reviewed it and said it was a bit, eh. I actually rather enjoyed it. It was a really chilled experience as you're working together to sort of do these objectives and just build out a map. That's really cool and it does really capture what's great about the video game. I can't see myself necessarily purchasing it and adding it to the collection because I think after a few plays you your sort of interest would wane, though there were things in the box that we didn't see. It looked like there were some maybe other tiles and stuff that you'd unlock as you play. It was good fun. I definitely not turned down another play of the game, and maybe those boxes in the box, well, maybe that would be enough to sort of keep my interest for many plays. But I'm glad I have played it. I'm now also not entirely sure how well the Jewel version would work. I'm a bit upset I didn't manage to uh, get a play of the Jewel one, but still one that I'm interested in. And, well, Dorf Romantic, the board game, if you're looking for a chill tile placement game, uh, yeah, definitely worth checking out. 
Next up we have Kitten, which is a small dexterity sort of building game from Alley Cat Games. Now I'm not going to go into too much depth here, because I'm actually going to be reviewing it for the channel. Alley Cat Games gave me a copy to bring home, play with hopefully a range of people, and sort of give you some proper thoughts on it. But it's this small little balancing game, you flip a card over, and you're trying to replicate basically with your sort of cats that thing. You're grabbing the cats, trying to make sure they're in the right sort of orientation and stacking them up. But they're quite small cats, so it's a really portable dexterity game. I enjoyed my plays at UK Games Expo, and hopefully that will continue, and I'll let you know in the review. Next up, we have a Spiel release, but it was being demoed at UK Games Expo, and that is Acropolis Athena Expansion. I really liked the Acropolis base game. It's in my collection still because I'm, well, it's really cool tile placement in my opinion. And the additions to it, well, they are only good. I really like the single tiles that you can sort of almost add anywhere, just getting extra stuff, extra points from them. And as you're doing these little challenges that are getting you those um, things, you're also collecting elements of an Athena statue. And if you manage to get the full four bits, your sort of marble, your stone cubes that are left at the end of the game, instead of one point, they're five. So you have to really commit to it almost to get that done. But I enjoyed the expansion. And I think if you like Acropolis, it adds a little without sort of taking away from the Acropolis feel definitely want to dive into this one again when it's released and that's again it looks like a spiel q4 sort of release there's a load of those objective cards in the box and you're only using four each time so i'm really excited to uh, to give that one another play later in the year and i think it will get acropolis back to the table for many people next up i went and saw at the asthma day booth double connect this is a new version of Double, and it's an interesting one. It sort of combines Double, where you're matching up symbols, with Connect 4. Yes, that is does sound like a weird thing, but you're building basically out on the table. When you find a connection, you place that card down, and it's like got your colour around it, somewhere like adjacent to the thing that you've matched it with. So you're sort of starting to add these cards out onto the table and trying to do a sort of line of four of your cards. Well, that involves then you blocking opponents. Now, I played this at two with the demo that was at the table. Sort of, it, they taught me and had a quick game against them. I'm not sure how it would work with four players, which it looks like it went up to but I'd be excited to try it, and it comes out soon, I think. Another game I played at the Expo was Seaside. Now, this comes in a nice sort of linen bag, some quite nice wooden chip token things. They're double-sided, and, well, it really had sort of a feel of sea salt and paper. The first few minutes of the game, I was a bit like, hmm, I'm not sure I'm feeling this. You've got to remember what all of these symbols do, and then they started to click and I was really starting to enjoy it. There's some good interaction between the players as you're kind of not wanting them to take certain things as, oh, I've got a load of beaches, that gets me a load of shells from the middle. So if someone else takes a beach and takes some of those I, on my turn, maybe that's not what I get to do. I would have maybe taken loads. It's also got one of the best ways to work out if someone's won or not. You literally stack all of your wooden tokens up at the end of the game and whoever has the tallest pile wins. No need to work out any points, you just stack your tiles. That's really cool uh, and I'd like to give that one another go. Like I said, some sea salt and paper vibes, but a very different game because it's not card based, it's this these chunky wooden tokens and that seaside. Then I went over and played Slide. Now, this could have been just unfortunate. It had been sort of um, a longer day for me at that point. And this one is quite sort of a bit of a puzzle. And I did pretty terrible at this one. And I don't know if that's maybe tainted my opinion of the game, but I did feel that it was very lucky or unlucky in terms of you 
flip some cards over and then in turn order you basically take them and then have to slide them in. It's a really cool sort of thing that you're sliding cards into this grid but you don't want high numbers and less you can get the same number next to each other. So let's say you've got a 10, you slide it in. That's going to get you 10 points but it's whoever's the lowest score. Later on though, if you can somehow slide into your grid another 10 so that they touch, they cancel each other out. Or even if it's three tens, four tens, whatever, as long as they're touching, they cancel. Now, I really like the logic there. I just found that you never knew what numbers were going to be there each round to work out where you'd want in your grid to open up to be able to move. Even if someone else would then draft it from you, it just felt I needed or wanted that one extra bit of information each time to know which of my face down cards should I be putting into the middle. Yeah, there was just not enough information there. I think other people really seem to love it though, so maybe it was just me going into a game um, with a bit of a mushed brain um, from a day of gaming, but uh, yeah, so slide, maybe other people will enjoy it a lot more than I did. Another Alley Cat Games title that I played was Happy Home. This was again on my sort of must play list and well it's a solid tile placement game. I think I'd need to play it a few times uh, trying the different scoring cards and different things like that but I liked the sort of rondelle, um, sort of rondelle and ratchet style thing where there's this thing in the middle you're going to keep going round but whoever's at the back of the queue gets to go first and they maybe jump really far ahead and then the next person jumps in all of the little gaps between them and that means that they get a load of extra furniture and you're trying to collect sets of types of furniture but also colours for the different rooms, you're trying to put potted plants down. I lost an absolute ton of points because one of my rooms, the one that was the biggest, had loads of empty gaps and our end game scoring was, well, whatever has the most negative like spaces, they lose you points. But I got this sort of really cool bit of furniture in there that I thought was going to be perfect and I could work around it. And then everyone else drafted like the rug or the potted plant or whatever. So I couldn't quite fill in some of the gaps that this weird shape had left. I like the way you're building this home. I like that sort of central ratchet uh, mechanic of how you're actually getting the things i just like to see it maybe with fewer players. We played it with four, it goes up to five, I believe. I think it would be really interesting at two or three. So I'd like to give that one another go. Um, but like I say, a solid tile placement game, happy home. Two more games on the list, and the last one that was new to me was Pac-Man Corridor. Corridor? Either way, I'd not even played the original, but we played the Pac-Man version of it. In this, well, one player plays as Pac-Man, the other player, or players, because you can have four people, one being each ghost, are the ghosts. So one player moves Pac-Man twice, then all of the ghosts move once, unless they're looking at Pac-Man, then they get to move twice. Pac-Man's trying to eat the orb things around the board, trying to work around sort of where these wooden bits have been placed to block off some of the paths. Yeah, I had a lot of fun with that. I could see some people really enjoying it. It's uh, it's one of those abstract strategy sort of ones. And this one, because it's got that Pac-Man on it, that theming to it, I think it will go really well for um, that publisher. And I also like that it's not just a slap a theme on. That Pac-Man game mode is different from the original Corridor, and you can play either version with that Pac-Man corridor corridor whatever however you pronounce it you can you can play either version with that set i really like that they've done that they've not just slapped a theme on even though if they just slapped the theme on i think a lot of people would still have been interested so i'd, I'd give that one a go if you get a chance to and last but not least i got to play star wars unlimited i've 
really been enjoying that one recently and well it only continues i, I managed to play it against a, a friend so what we did um it was the uh, luke deck versus a custom bubba fett uh, but i really have been enjoying this one i'm not going to say i'm ready for competitive play I would probably sort of get beaten out of the store, not in punishing ways, but in just in how bad I'd lose in a competitive scene. But I'm really enjoying it. And like I said, in my UK Games Expo haul, I even picked up some special tokens from the event just to upgrade my sort of um, Star Wars Unlimited experience, as well as getting the sort of event exclusive promo of Grogu. But there you have it, they're all of the games that I played at UK Games Expo. Like I said, some of them I will be hopefully, or already have, review copies of. So I'll be able to play them more and give you a bit more of a th sort of thought and thinking about them uh, on their own. But let me know what you played at the event in the comments section below, or if you weren't there, what of my list would you really like to have got your hands on and played? Let me know in the comments section below. And until next time, have a fantastic day gaming, even, or especially, if you're at the UK Games Expo this year, last year, or even next year.